Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today you're watching our very first video on our new channel, Island LED. Uh, we're gonna be talking about everything LED, including LED strips, LED panels, uh, LED modules, uh, how to build a video wall, how to do all kinds of stuff. We're gonna work with uh, addressable digital lights. We'll work with regular lights. And that's all on this channel. Now, we're also gonna spend a lot of time on how to, the good and the bad about it. We've been doing lights for over seven years, so I can definitely tell you a lot of bad stories about it. Today, we're gonna to talk about bending your LED lights. So if you can afford to sacrifice some lights, then this is a pretty good way of doing it. If you can't afford to sacrifice any lights, then this might not be a good way to go. Uh, and I'll explain why. Right now, right here, we have RGB strip, and it's a non-waterproof version, which I like using all the time. This is your first choice in LED lights. I'm going to plug them in and show you that I've already actually done one here. And there we go. So this is a pretty good quality strip. We were lucky with this one here. I was able to do my right angle and all you really do is create a fold. RGB, you have to create folds and pleats to get it to work around. So I'm gonna turn this off. Now, before I actually show you, I'm gonna say this doesn't work all the time. This can work, I'm gonna show you on another strip where the quality of the strip is very poor and every time we try and do it, it's just going to break, uh, in which case it ruins your lights. So, good quality. All I'm gonna do is physically take the strip and pleat it over. And then I'm going to pleat it over again. So this got me about halfway to where I need it to be. 45 degrees, the next one got me all the way. Now I'm at 90 degrees. So this worked out really well. Now, I always worry about the chips in the middle. Uh, so I always usually remove that chip either by soldering it or using an X-Acto knife to set it free. Uh, and you just kind of score it and get that. I'll show you how to take that off in a second. But this is things going well. Now, this is why I prefer to cut and solder when possible. I don't mind wasting a strip. It doesn't hurt me so much. I've got lots of them. But if you can't afford to, to burn it and test it, well, then you're going to have issues. So let's take a strip like this, not as good quality as that. They look identical. They're both exactly the same strip. They're both exactly the same setup. They're both 50-50 RGB, uh, and they both have the same amount of brightness, but the quality of the backer is where the problem lies. So they look exactly the same. It's functioning, it's working properly. As soon as I try and make a bend with it, I'm gonna go between the lights on the first. As soon as I do this, and then I fold the next one over, bam, those lights are out. Now, the last time I've done this, I wasn't so lucky. I didn't just lose these lights here, I lost the whole string. Uh, test number one, test number two. So, two out of three times on this particular strip, the lights stop working. So this is the reality. This is the type of videos we're gonna show you. If it goes bad, I'm gonna let you know. So. Uh, you do need to test and check to make sure this works. So these lights went out and that's the way I'd like them to stay. Uh, I don't want these lights right here going back on or being partially on blue. Uh, if I really wanted to play it safe, I would have taken one of the chips off and that would have actually stopped that light from ever working. It would still work the rest of the string. There are two power leads that run through the whole thing and every three lights, there's a little tap in there that feeds that little section so you can keep cutting your lights down all the way down to a three section of light just like that so if i did that just for a sample sake that is what your lights can be down to three that is one set of lights this is a 12 volt package so it runs three at a time if this was five volts it would be one diode if it was 24, it would have had six and so on and so forth. It's just math at that point. So this worked out, we got lucky there, but like I said, two out of three times, two out of three, it didn't work. So buyer beware, always test it at the end of the roll if you plan on doing any pleats. Uh, waste a little bit at the end, don't try doing it right in the middle, you may just ruin the whole strip or you may have to come up with a different game plan. But other strips that work out pretty well, you'll see a lot of videos where people have this type of strip, which is just your regular 3528 diode, single diode, 12 volts. So what we have is three diodes. 
and we have plenty of room in between. That's a, the, the cut distance is the same. Now, that's multicolor. This is a solid color. Could be white, could be anything. Now, to make this happen, we have to first do two things. We've got to bend it in one direction first. And for it to come towards me, you fold it right back on itself. And there you go. Now I have that done at 90 degrees. Uh, you can push down, but the more you push down, the more chances you take of something getting damaged. But again, good foam tape at the back, not just the regular backer that's on these things. I uh, remember foam tape is gonna be a big, big conversation on this channel. Foam tape is for everything except having to put it on what this was made for, which was for aluminum tracks, uh, acrylic surfaces, uh, glass. So any smooth, perfectly polished finish, this will stick to it. That's what it was manufactured. It's only double side sticky tape. It's not double side foam tape. Foam tape is what's gonna give you the texture difference to bite into MDF, OSB, melamine, wood, any type of painted surface. That's why you need foam. That's why you need to put that in between the two. Uh, for good measure, you normally silicone the tips down. Sometimes you're thinking, ah, it's too much work, too much work. But if you take the time, it'll be a really nice job. So there we go. So that's how easy it was to fold that. Now let's say we had something a little bit more complicated. Uh, we had lights that had silicone on them. By the way, this is why I don't sell silicone or buy silicone lights too often. Uh, we do have lots of them here, but not recommended. Do not buy IP65 lights if you can avoid it. You're always better off to buy non-waterproof IP33 style lights. Uh, unless you're actually planning on having to wash this down with Windex all the time, there's no reason to buy this light. There is an IP67 or 68, which is a water submersible or a water line light. We'll cover that on another video when we talk about the differences of all these strips. But for this case, it's all about cutting it into a 90 degrees. So we wanna cut this 90 degrees. This is so rigid, I can't, there's no way I'm gonna be able to put pleats in this and fold this up. I have to make a choice. I have to take away some of this silicone. So we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen simply by cutting back. What I'm gonna do is I wanna get my pleat in here somewhere. This is where I've decided my pleat's gonna go. So I do have to take away the silicone from that area. I'm just cutting the surface. I'm scoring it right now. I'm sorry, you can't see that because my fingers are holding it, but I'm just literally cutting the silicone, not the actual lighting underneath. I don't need to go all the way to here because I plan on, on being able to stop here and get the fold inside of this area here. So I'm just gonna trim it back around here. Now you could go from cut point to cut point. I mean, it's just silicone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this off. So as soon as I get far enough that I feel comfortable that I can shred a nice straight line, then I will do that. So now I'm gonna fold this back a bit so I can get underneath there. I am literally grabbing the silicone off the top, hopefully not tearing my wires apart. Try and make sure not to damage anything because it looks like I'm on the verge of damaging it. So I'll take my time a little bit. So what is happening right now is I'm actually peeling part of the copper off. So I really got to get that back down or I'm about to waste this entire roll. I'm like that. It doesn't work out, I just get another one. So there we go. Okay. It's off. Now, I am a little concerned because I did do that little gaffer right there, which appears to be just mostly silicone. There's a little copper on the back, but we're going to find out if I messed that up. So how do we find out? Well, we're going to plug it in. I saved that just by, I got to be honest, this is just luck. I could have, if I didn't catch that in time, I would have pulled that right off. So even with that little, it's just the white plastic that came off. So we're okay. We saved it. I need to now pleat this. So we'll see how good these lights are. I'm going to pleat it once. And even with the damage, I don't have a choice. I have to pleat it a second time. So there you go. These lights, again, those are just little pleats I put inside. I just tried to get 45 at a time because I have chips and diodes in the way. There we go. I now have a silicone finish with pleats and the right angle. 
Now again, you want to test this on the end of the roll so you can make sure that your light string isn't going to crack or get damaged because depending on the quality of your lights, it may not work. So there you go. So we took the silicone off this little section here so this way we can put those little pleats into it. Again, we put the pleats in this one because it was a 50-50 chip. So here, this is again, this, this chip here is a very small, it's a 30, it's a 3017. So it's a very small chip, but it's very intense. It's a very bright chip and it's double density. So remember, if we take our piece here for reference, uh, this one here has twice as many lights in that same amount of gap. Uh, it's very tight. The cut points are half as much as what we had here because we call this a double density roll. Instead of having just 300 lights on the roll, which is a good number, this has 600. So very bright when we plug it in, poof, we get a ton of light out of it. Very bright, showcase display lighting. So this is a daylight. It's gonna give us a ton of light. It's very tight, so it's good for close proximity, uh, but I need to put an angle in it. You gotta be very dainty with this one here. You could, you gotta find, there's very few gaps that you can really draw yourself into a 45 degree bend, because I really need to bend this 45 across here. So I will find that spot, let's say right here, pull this over, get my 45. I know I, did, I got it, because now my lights would be opposite, upside down, opposite, running 90 degrees. Then I basically just hold it down right there at the crease line, pull the lights back and let them fold over themselves. There we go, we'll get that out of the way. And now these lights are now folded at 90 degrees. So now we have a nice set of folded lights. And again, double density, so it's a, it's a little harder than the regular ones. Plug it in, there you go. Again, nice quality lights, they worked out well. You always wanna test it at the end to make sure that, that they'll take the bend and there you go. So that is another easy way of getting it done. So that is today's video. It's all about bending lights. So we've bent them, not about soldering, it's about bending them. Uh, if you need to remove a chip because you think a chip is in the way or you've had an issue where it's changing the color, you can simply either use a knife or use a soldering pen. So if you use a soldering pen, I'm still gonna wanna slide the knife under there a little bit. What I'm doing with the knife is I'm actually creating a bit of a lift, some, some release tension there. And then I'm going to slide this here just to get the solder to let go. If I get it across the first three on this side here, because this happens to be, sorry, the first two, it's an RGB. I push down on it, boom, it's released. Okay, now I can just slide on the other side, repeat that function. And again, I'm just trying to get it to let go. Boom, done. I just plucked the chip off. I have no fear that this is not gonna work now. It's gonna be just fine. No matter what I did on the actual lift, it's going to work properly and these lights are not gonna work. The rest of it will work just fine. The rest of them will work just fine. This is now out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. So again, if I gave it a bend, give it another bend, I'd be able to adjust my 45 into play here and we're back in business. Done deal, just like that. But remember, quality of the lights are gonna determine if you can do this or not. So that's today's video. I uh, remember this is all about our affiliate link and our partner program that we have with Amazon down below. So we'll have all of the lighting options that we can uh, bring to you. And in this case, it'll be all down with the links down below. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe, new channel needs those subscribers and uh, hit the bell button so you know when the next video is up. Thanks for watching, bye for now.